Be sure to check out my store for the stuff I use and templates at a low cost, and get my everything pack so you can have everything in my store at a reduced cost, less than $20 if you tweet it out. What's up guys, Quezzy here bringing you guys another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create textures from scratch in Photoshop and also how to make them seamless. So I have this texture pack coming out um, today actually. Uh, the link will be in the description if you want to check it out. And it's a bunch of these textures that I made from scratch and all in Photoshop and also using some Chaotica stuff and whatnot and brushes and yeah so I'm gonna show you a few of those techniques that I use to create these textures here and how to also make them seamless so let's just hop right into the tutorial so uh, I'm using a 800 by 800 document here um, you can use anything you want if you want it to be seamless I recommend I recommend using a uh, square like I am here uh, but it can be any size you want and the first thing I'm going to show you is rock textures, metal textures, wood textures, all from scratch using Photoshop stuff, and then some other techniques to use um, doing other things, and then finally how to make it seamless. So let's start off by doing the, the rock texture, and I'm going to create a new layer here, and the colors I'm going to select are a lighter gray, um, so it's like towards the like upper three-fourths, or it's like a quarter from the top, I guess and then the same thing with a darker gray. So we want those two colors and then let's go filter render clouds. Um, so we got a nice cloud effect here. Uh, if you don't like that you can click it again get something else. Do that as many times as you feel. And then we want to go to noise add noise and do about 5% uh, Gaussian and uh, so that should be alright and click OK. Then we want to go over here to the tab. Uh, you'll see a layers, channels, and paths tab. We want to go to channels, go to alpha one. Um, actually, you will not have an alpha one. I just happen to already have one from before. So yours will look like this. You just want to go down here and create new, and it'll be called alpha one. And we want to go filter, uh, render, difference clouds. You can see we basically get clouds again. Uh, we don't want this. Unless you do want something like this, you can keep it. But I want something a little darker, so I'm going to do different clouds again. And you can see it becomes a little darker. Now let's hop back over to the layers. Click on the layer. And I... What? Did that layer delete? What the heck? Let me just do this again real fast. And so on this clouds layer that we created, we want to go filter, render, lighting effects. And you can see, I'm going to zoom out here, uh, you'll have to adjust your light um, to be to the side coming in and covering the whole canvas or whatever. Uh, but yours will probably look something like this. And I mean, that looks alright. That in itself is an alright texture, I guess. But we want to put the texture on alpha 1, which will make it this rocky looking texture, sort of like the moon, I suppose. And we want to get this dot in the center the best we can. And I'm going to bring these in a little bit to focus the light a little better. And then we can adjust this however we want. And you can play around with these settings. I don't know how much I changed. Um, but I also have mine set to spot. Um, and yeah, so once you figure out something you like with this, uh, it should create a pretty nice looking rock texture. You want to click OK. And then from here, you can do uh, stuff like adding color or whatnot. So if I go down here and add solid color, and let's say I just pick like a dark brown, like that or something, I can set that to multiply, maybe decrease the opacity a little bit. I don't know, color it any way you want. You could do this on overlay. And yeah, so you can just play around with that, add colors and gradients or variants to it, however you see fit. And then you got yourself a rock texture. I'll show you how to make it seamless after I show you the other couple of techniques. So uh, let's just hop into doing a metal. So we want to go down, create a new layer. That'll be layer two. And we want to do the same thing we did before. So filter, uh, let's render clouds filter noise add noise this time we're gonna make the noise a hundred percent instead of five click OK and then let's go filter blur motion blur now uh, you can play around with this uh, you can do whatever you see is fit um, obviously the higher the more streaky it is but if we go lower 
you can see uh, the streaks are smaller, but it kind of has a bit more of a metallic look, I guess, more metally. And I'm going to click OK on this. Actually, maybe even a little more. Yeah, I'm going to go about 86. You can see the edges are a bit weird, um, but I'm going to just click OK. And I'm going to go filter, render, lighting effects again. This time we don't want the alpha texture, so we're going to click none on that. And we're just going to bring in this light like so. Bring it a little closer. And that's that looks good for me. OK. And let's zoom in here. You can see the edges are still that bit wonky, so I'm just going to simply Command T, Alt, and drag that out so we get rid of those. So it's just these nice looking lines. And I'm going to create a new layer above that. And I like to just make it a clipping mask. It doesn't matter, but I uh, put it in a clipping mask so I know they're kind of together and I don't want to put them in a group. And I'm going to get my brush. I'm just going to get a soft brush. And you can do this however you want, but I'm just going to make like a streak down the side or di uh, down the middle or diagonally across the middle, I guess. And then maybe add like a spot here and here and actually I'm gonna command U on that layer bump up the brightness so it's all the way white and slap that on overlay and maybe decrease the opacity a little bit but there we go we got like a nice gleam there uh, it'd be probably a little nicer if that was a straight line uh, but whatever and you can see we create a pretty nice uh, metallic texture just that easy now I'm going to show you how to do the wood texture and there's probably a lot of variations you can do either sort of a mix of the first one I showed you or the second one I showed you um, using the alpha or not using the alpha essentially so I'm just going to show you how to not use the alpha and we're going to create a new layer go to filter render and we're going to do fibers and you can see already we have a sort of tree bark looking texture I suppose and it depends what kind of wood you want I'm gonna go for like a bark type look but if you wanted that like wood panel you just kinda of have to make this smoother actually go the other way kinda of make it bigger and kinda of just blur this out a little bit uh, but I'm actually gonna increase it and kinda of get that bark sort of look and click OK and then all I'm really gonna do is get a solid color I'm going to get some sort of dark brown and put that on multiply and maybe decrease the opacity a wee bit and then add some like effects like levels so maybe add a little levels bring that in bring that in get a bit of a wood look and then you can also create a new layer and I'm just gonna get a solid black for this soft brush and you can kinda just click around that's not what I want to do and create some dark spots in here slap them on overlay decrease the opacity a little bit so you get some different uh, dark spots and you can add some light spots doing white but you can create a pretty simple uh, wood texture like that um, it's not the best but that's how I went about doing it and yeah so now I'm gonna just show you some other techniques you can do to create textures so let me just hide everything again and I'm gonna group this all actually and might as well just leave it all open and then hide that and uh, so essentially you can use stock pictures of things you created so in my texture pack I had a bunch of stocks from Chaotica um, I don't know if this one was uh, I believe this one was actually so if I open this up in preview real fast uh, you can see this texture uh, I think this was a cha Chaotica stock that I manipulated to create a texture so that is just using various filter effects duplication uh, erasing and stuff um, but some of those filter effects, if I, I'm just going to create a new layer and go filter, render, clouds, and I'm just going to show you a few of these filter effects that I used. So I'm going to go filter. Obviously, I showed you the blur, motion blur. 
and that creates nice streaky lines which are fun to work with in some instances um, distort also has a lot of good stuff so if I go to wave you can see <clears throat> you can see the little preview here it might be hard to see um, on your screen but I can adjust this so if I bring up the amplitude I get some abstract looking things here which if you buy my texture pack you would see a couple of those and then if I bring the amplitude down make it a little bit <clears throat> a little normal I can increase the wavelength to kind of make it a natural wave a little more or decrease it to get something even more abstract like so and <clears throat> that is just an interesting effect to do give it some waves it's good for like liquidy textures and whatnot and then you can also change the type triangle uh, square and just get different looks that way so I'm gonna go back in here I'm not gonna save that or anything um, you can also do noise I showed you a, a noise earlier uh, but pixelate as well um, you can get uh, mosaic and create squares which is pretty interesting and I'm sure you guys are familiar with some of these filters if you use Photoshop um, and then the one of the other ones that I use most commonly is style uh, stylize uh, find edges and you can see it's probably hard to see on the screen but it kind of outlines stuff and I usually uh, hit command I to inverse it and it outlines everything that is on that layer and it's pretty hard to see there but if I go at a levels and bring this in you can see it a little bit better like that and you can get cool textures by doing stuff like that and putting it on overlay and yada 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 you kind of really just have to play around with stuff but those are a couple techniques that I use uh, fairly frequently uh, I also use a little bit of oil paint to get smooth uh, textures and whatnot and finally uh, liquify and if you guys have never used liquify before it's really great in creating real liquid textures I believe I have one here yeah this one is very much uh, liquidy and this was using liquify and it, it's kind of like a metal metallic looking liquid which is really sweet but all that is is using um, the top uh, warp tool forward warp tool choosing a size and just kind of just dragging around into different directions like so and then filling out the page so boom something like that let me get that levels again and you get something like that it's pretty easy and that's just some of the techniques I used and I paired some together I use some other filters I use multiple filters together and you can create some really sweet textures um, not to mention adding colors and stuff um, I usually either put the color on top and overlaid it or put the color on bottom so let me just show you an example of that get a solid color maybe a dark red and just throw this guy on overlay and then it just creates it or makes it red so you can go about doing it that way and or any of the other ways I showed you or combining them uh, using brushes using other stocks from other sources uh, or other programs that you create um, but now I'm going to show you how to make these seamless so I'm actually going to delete this guy and I'm just going to show you it with this rock texture that was the first one we created. So we have this rock texture but some textures are going to be off the uh, visible canvas um, I guess or the document. Uh, you remember that metal I kind of resized it so it was off like that and if we do that to any of the textures we just want to make sure they're cropped so just hit the crop tool and hit enter and it'll make it the proper size that we want and then you want to you want to go uh, filter other and offset now uh, you want to have this like down the middle or you can have this anywhere really uh, I do it down the middle so 400 400 because I have an 800 by 800 uh, size document so I just did half on either one and you can see this does not look seamless at all it looks pretty disgusting uh, with these lines down the middle but the edges will line up perfectly which is what we want so I'm just gonna go ahead and click OK on here and we're gonna try and just buff out uh, these middle parts so there's a lot of ways you can do this I'm just gonna show you the way I do it and I'm gonna actually duplicate this layer just in case uh, I mess up and can't command Z far enough back um, you always want to do that make sure you have that extra layer 
and I'm just gonna go to the clone stamp tool right here and I'm gonna zoom in a bit and I'm gonna go down to the bottom left corner and click about right here and then I'm gonna start from um, I'm gonna start on the left line here and get rid of this by just simply clicking and dragging across and now I clicked a little too low so I'm getting that second line so I gotta click up a little higher so I'll click there holding alt and then go across and then if you see directly down below I can't show you with my mouse but there's a little cross section and that's where it's being duplicated at so when that cross section approaches the line it'll be when the brush approaches the line we want to stop and you can see that line is already showing up there because it was there so I'm actually gonna go here click alt and get rid of it boom alright so now we got rid of that line section there but um, one thing is that this might mess up the seamlessness of these corners so where we got that guy from down here I'm gonna go over here and get the opposite one so I'm gonna click right there and then do the same thing over here and just click and go across you get close to the end you wanna just pick a new spot so I'll click like right here and finish her off and then we want to do the same with the top and bottom so I'll go from here go down and this time we can go all the way to the uh, middle because the other cross seam is out and then let's do this again on the bottom one like that so there we go all the seams gone and if it depending on your texture it could look a little funky doing it that way um, but you can always just kind of click around so I can click down here maybe make the brush a little bigger too and just like maybe add like a spot there um, and just kind of mix and match pieces around because if there's like lighting and whatnot it could mess it up um, but yeah, so that's this texture is now uh, seamless. So I'm gonna hide this guy, and I'm just gonna decrease this or decrease the size of this, duplicate it, drag it over, and you can see it is seamless. Easy as that. Let me uh, zoom in here. You can see the seams like right here. Oops. Bring that back over. And you can see how well that lines up. And where we kind of made the adjustments in the middle here looks pretty all right. And let me check the bottom. And that looks all right too, which is great. So yeah, guys, that's basically the tutorial. That's how to create your own textures. That's how to make them seamless. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please drop a like on the video. Um, and be sure to check out that texture pack I made in the description. And I hope to see you guys next time. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at Quezzy. Add my Snapchat, which is also Quezzy. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.